All right, folks, today I'm going to try to change your life, try to create a fork in the road for you, and I'm serious. Hang in with me for a second here. I'm going to give a little analogy. Uh, in my work life, a lot of you know that I was an uh, expert in the maintenance uh, and reliability of equipment. Most plants, factories are highly reactive, meaning <laughs> when things break, they fix them. Okay, and they'll go do some proactive things to prevent things from failing when things settle down. Maybe tomorrow, maybe next week. Well, guess what? Tomorrow and next week, and things slowing down never happens. At the end of the year, the same top two, three, four reasons for poor, poor reliability, poor production performance keep coming out because we focused on the numerous chaos and not the critical few. Examples like, do we do a great job at lubrication? Do we do a great job with job kitting or training our people on precision maintenance? So we repeat that every year, okay? So that's, that's, man, that's reliability and maintenance in most manufacturing plants. Okay, most people live their lives the same way. Surviving the day, living for the weekend, just living in the chaos, okay? Perhaps on New Year's Day, uh, you know, we may reflect on what's important, set some new, uh, new Year's resolutions for the upcoming year. Okay, sound familiar? The unexamined life is not worth living. That's by Socrates, a Greek philosopher from Athens in the year 399 BC. Okay, and I'm a great fan of uh, Greek philosophy and the Stoics there. So this week, I had uh, an unusual task that created a fork in the road for me. Okay? As part of my men's study group that I'm in, we're studying Socrates, actually. Uh, we were challenged to write our obituary. Okay, now don't tune out. Don't tune out and say, oh my gosh, what's Joe talking about here? But I wrote my obituary. A couple drafts, it's not finalized yet. Hopefully I got a few years to, to finalize it, but it's 513 words on my life. Now that may sound a little bit more like an essay than an obituary, but hey, you know, 513 words. Who I was, what I hoped to be remembered for, what I thought was important. Here it is, okay? I wanted to show you that, just so you knew that I had it. That'd make a half page in the newspaper, I guess. And then I got some calculations down at the bottom that I'm gonna go into here. Okay, 513 total words. Zero words on my net worth, on my income, on cars, exotic trips I took, stuff I owned, zero words. 33 words, or 6%, on my career. And remember, I was a plant manager at three different locations. I was the global director of reliability. I had some pretty cool jobs, 6%. 33 words on traveling. My wife and I like to travel. You know, we're traveling a lot in the United States. We like to travel a little bit international, but we also like to be home. We are gone maybe you know, 12 to 15 weeks a year. That's a, but a lot of that is seeing our kids, which live in cool locations. 6% traveling. 225 words, or 44%, was on family and relationships. 44%. 222 words, almost the same, 44%, was just on background, on hobbies, you know, the impact I was hoping to have in, in retirement, on coaching and writing and on YouTube. I like making videos like this. 44%. So let's kind of examine that uh, obituary just a little bit. There's no mention of money, no mention of stuff, okay? My job was a footnote. Travel was mentioned, but 6%, kind of another footnote. 88% was on family, relationships, hobbies, making an impact, where I'm volunteering at, 88%. What is the focus of your life today? this week, this month? Where are you spending your time? You know, it's easy to forget what's important. 
so don't. That um, was a movie quote from uh, Mr. Mom, a movie, I think it was in the 1980s. Uh, somehow that stuck with me. It's easy to forget what's important, so don't. This is really why I retired at 54. I get a lot of grief from comments from people like you. Why did you retire at the top of your career, your top income, your top ability to save? Why would you retire? You could have worked four, five, six more years and had a lot more money, a lot more stuff, and could have taken more and more exotic vacations and stayed in five-star hotels. You're an idiot. I've been told that. <laughs> but I had enough. And I needed to spend my time, my most, most precious resource, where I thought was important. I could have had much more. Perhaps a couple more promotions. You know, maybe saved a lot more, like I said, but you know, maybe that, uh, that footnote would have gone from 6% to 7% with that time. Hmm, something to think about. So there's your fork in the road. Write your obituary today. Maybe put it off till this weekend. It might change your life by changing your focus. It did for me, and I'm a pretty reflective guy, but um, it's easy to get caught up in the chaos. So don't, maybe an obituary can serve as a guide. Maybe you can read that once a month and make sure that your actions are congruent with who you are, what you wanna be remembered for. The big part of this, biggest majority in my life uh, is my family and relationships, by far. It's Joe out.